All right, with all the recent videos with the DJI Avada and washout issues, I hear a lot of people saying, well, all Cine Whoops have washout. Well, using this Cine Whip, the Beta FPV Pavo 25, let's check out some things that you can do if your Cine Whoop has washout issues and some things you can look at to hopefully correct it. I know with this one, there are some changes you can make to totally get rid of washout. And uh, let's get into what that is. So let's check out the Pavo in its default configuration, how it comes. Whoa. Right there, you can see it. Right there. Right there. So you're getting that washout condition. The other thing that's odd with this is the odd behavior it gets with uh, zero throttle. See, I'm still like climbing at zero throttle. That's odd, and it doesn't really come down. There it, there it kind of catches. You can see it really has an odd behavior for to get with forward flight and just going up and then getting off the throttle. Like if you climb over some trees and then you go down. See how it kind of is hovering there? So it's very strange that behavior. There it's now dropping, and then it catches. Now you can see it like kind of caught. It's just not going down, there it goes, now it dropped. So that's also a very strange behavior. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can make that better. See if I can get it to come in here. Yeah, see the combination of washout and that behavior are not good for like drop-ins. They kind of come in cautiously. So let's see, let's see if we can fix that up. One of the simplest things you can do to see if you can solve a washout issue is simply reverse the motor direction on your CineWoop. And this one, this quad comes with a props out rotation of the motor, so it means the front motors are spinning to the outward direction. Same thing for the back motors, they're spinning kind of this way to the outward direction. And if you flip this to a prop in configuration, it makes a big difference. Now in Betaflight 4.3, it is easier than ever to go in and reverse your motor direction. The first thing we need to do up top here is go to the motors tab, of course. And then in this motor direction is reversed, we're gonna go ahead and uncheck that. So that will change the configuration to a props in rotation. You can see which way it's expecting the props to rotate here once we toggle that off. After that, we're gonna go into the uh, reverse or motor direction option here. We're gonna have to make sure our props are off and then we're gonna plug in a battery. And I usually go into the individual wizard right here. From this point with the battery plugged in, you can go ahead and click on each motor and then you can go down to here and then click normal or reverse. And what you're gonna do is go through each motor, one, two, three, and four. And then you're going to either click normal or reverse to make sure it's rotating the way Betaflight is expecting. If I click on this motor, which I'm on motor one, and I click normal, the motor should spin this direction. So you use your finger, put it on there, and make sure it's spinning that direction. If it's not, then go ahead and click on reverse, and then it will, you know, if it's spinning the correct direction, then you're in good shape. Then go to motor two, do the same thing. Click on normal, is it spinning this direction? If it is, you're good. If it's not, click reverse, same thing. Three, four, then you can check them all as well. Once you're done, go ahead and hit closed right here. And what I like to do for a final check is I go ahead and click on this button down here and then just spin up my motors right here and then go through and put my finger on each motor and make sure they are spinning the direction we show here. Now, if your CineWoop has a props in configuration, go ahead and reverse it, the, everything I just said, but go in the opposite direction to have and try a motor spinning out direction to see if that increases your performance and gets rid of your washout issue. There is some other things we can change in the PIDs tab. So in the PIDs tab, we can see this mode here and your quad most likely is set up with this mode to be roll, pitch, and yaw. So the sliders command and change all the PID gains on, again, roll, pitch, and yaw. What we can do is we can change that to roll and pitch. 
Now, Betaflight is kind of centric around a five inch 6S racing rig without ducks. So the farther you go away from that, the more you might have to tweak and customize things. This is one of those items. What happens is your yaw axis does not have a thrust vector. There's no prop uh, pushing thrust in the yaw direction to rotate the quad this way. It's really a moment of inertia and more importantly, drag on the props, air drag. Well, when you put ducks around those props, you have less air drag around the outside of the prop because the duck's in the way and kind of makes a separation there. So what we need to do is say, since we have kind of less air drag, we're going to increase the priority of the yaw access in the PID controller. To do that, we can go ahead and change this from the roll pitch yaw just to roll and pitch. And then we can go ahead and bump those up on the P and the I gain on the yaw access. And again, since we have less physical air drag, we're gonna say, okay, to kind of compensate for that the best we can, we're gonna increase the priority of the yaw access in the PID controller so that it can compensate the best it can. Now, this doesn't mean it's gonna be a fix all, end all, be all, but it will help. And it will help specifically if you have some yaw bobbling going on uh, with any kind of ducted quad or even a larger quad like a cine lifter, same thing. Typically, I see myself going in here, switching that from roll pitch yaw to roll pitch and then increasing those P and I gains on the yaw axis. Uh, in this case, feed forward, you could set that, you could just kind of round that off or let that go. It's not as important feed forward on the yaw axis, so it really doesn't matter what you set that to um, in my experience. So with those settings adjusted on this quad, let's see how she does now with yaw washout. Okay, so let's see how she goes with the fix. Now, if I noticed before, it was doing it more with left, with left movements. You can see it's just not there anymore. Like giving it a hard y'all. Just not there. And more importantly, checking out how it does with the drops. It's normal, just drops. So if I go up and just drop, it just drops. Doesn't start to like auto rotate. You can see it here. Again, it just drops like it's I would expect. So obviously that makes it much more, uh, you know, easier to fly here when you're coming in things like this and you're gonna drop down. You don't have to worry about that washout or some sort of weird auto rotation thing that it's gonna do. So you know me, it's more than just, hey, anecdotally, why is there a difference between the two? It's really understanding the core of what's going on. Why is there a difference? Really understanding the problem as a whole. There was this reason I specifically showed the iTerm traces on the log overlays while the video was playing. If you can see on these two, on the left, what I have is the props out configuration and on the right with the props in. And you can see generally the purple, as I had before in the log overlays, the purple is the eye term. So the green is the sticks, the cyan is the quad following the stick. So you can see as I'm you know, making different yaw moves here, uh, whether it's a positive or negative, and you can see when the green moves up, that means I'm doing a stick input. Same thing for roll up here and pitch, and then the orange up here is the throttle commands I'm giving at the time. But look at this purple line here, and specifically when I'm doing those throttle chops where I'm out in the field and going up to elevation and chopping the throttle. 
Look how iTerm really builds up on this quad when the props are in an out configuration where that doesn't happen with the props in configuration. So for some aerodynamic reason with the props out configuration, when you're chopping the throttle, the quad is wanting to yaw to a certain, it's, it's wanting to yaw. And these m two motors here are spinning up to compensate for that. And that is what is causing them to have to spin up to a certain degree to compensate to keep the nose on hold when the and prop is out configuration. And then of course, as they're doing that to, to compensate, they're making additional thrust on these two motor columns here. And that is what is causing that issue. Peering into the black box, it's that I term wind up and the difference between those two for this one to this one over here, that's making that that difference in the, the yaw thrust column coming down. You also see it in somewhat, yeah, you also see it here just in going back and forth the moves. You can see how on the yaw, there is just more I-term buildup than there is with a props out configuration. So at the end of the day, in a props out configuration for this specific quad, there's less drag that the ducts are allowing on the props and decreasing the yaw authority even more increasing the amount of yaw washout and also causing an issue when you're doing a vertical drop because uh, it's gonna it's kind of wanting to tilt and slant wherein you do a props in configuration that's fixing so that is the lion's share of this and then also the pid gains uh, i'm sure you know do of course help with uh, making the yaw access a priority for the controller so hopefully you found that helpful go ahead and give those a shot on your quad if you're having yaw washout issues it goes to show that you know, being able to customize things in open source firmware is a handy tool every now and again. If you enjoyed this content, please do give it a thumbs up. It does help the channel. And if you want to support me for just a couple bucks a month, cup of coffee a month, links down below in the video description for my Patreon. As always, thanks everybody. And I hope this helps.